Welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast. I'm Richard and joined by Kylie. Hi, Kylie. Hello. And in today's episode, I am super excited to be uh, introducing you to Carrie Nola. She is a retired psychotherapist, intuitive mentor, and founder of the Abundance Activator for Healing Entrepreneurs. Hi, Carrie. Hey, Richard and Kylie. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and today I'm I'm excited because you know a lot of the people that we serve are healers and therapists, and a lot of times, not always, but sometimes there's a lot of blocks that come up when that group tends to go out and they want to get their work into the world, and they realize that they actually have to become entrepreneurs and business people, and they they hit all these things and they have to figure it out. So, let me give you a, a brief introduction for Carrie before we get going, and I'm sure there's going to be tons of value out of this episode. She is an entrepreneur. She's a former psychotherapist, best-selling author a podcaster and founder of the Abundance Activator for Healing Entrepreneurs, which is a membership community. And uh, while birthing and stewarding an abundant clinical practice specializing in complex trauma and disassociation for over a decade, her work has evolved to support therapists, coaches, and healers in activating their abundant service through mentorship, products, programs, events, and retreats. So, so welcome, Carrie. Maybe we could start and if you could maybe share a little bit of your background and how, I think it's kind of interesting because you started as a therapist yourself. How did you kind of maybe get into therapy and then how did you ha- make that huge pivot where you're like, look, I have to help this group of people mm. and others like them to get in and kind of master this game of business? Absolutely. Uh, therapy for me was a God wink. When I was a little girl, I used to sit at the dining room table and pretend I was a 911 operator. <laughs> Be like, 911, what's your emergency? And I just got so much out of imagining being able to help people in times of crisis and need. And I never knew how exactly that would manifest. I thought I would be a teacher. And then as I learned about the healing arts, therapy just made sense. And it was just like home for me. And I went to school and came right out of school building a private practice. I come from a family of entrepreneurs and I just, I don't fit into the mainstream narrative that well. I don't follow rules that I don't agree with. I just have a hard time. I'm a rather rebellious spirit at heart. So (laughs) I just loved being a therapist. I never saw a day when I would stop doing that. But after I published my first and second books in uh, 2012, I believe, started feeling a stirring of more, a message that I was meant to share broader than the four walls of a brick and mortar practice and office and ignored that for a long time until finally I got really ill and couldn't ignore the message anymore. God was knocking and then banging and then screaming. And I began mentoring other therapists and healers and felt just a natural transition toward retiring clinical practice, even though I loved it and felt that I could serve more by helping other healers to build their business and then the domino effect uh, outward to help more people from there. And I just want to say that Carrie has one of the highest client success rates that I've ever seen as far as like fast results. She did this three-day event that I spoke at and people were like making money during the event. This, they were, they were like, yeah, holding up their cell phones and stuff. So since I know you really well and you're one of my best friends, I know some of your stories and to demonstrate your unconventional approach to things, I want to hear the story of the teenager who didn't want to be in therapy. Do you know which one I'm talking about? (laughs) There's so many, but yes. (laughs) So, oh my gosh, uh, which one am I? I'm I'm thinking of two. So I love helping people that don't feel like they can be helped. You know, there's like cracking that code of like that really armored part of us that feels like we could never feel better. So oftentimes I would have teenagers come into my practice really resistant to change and just, oh my God, another therapist or grown up I have to talk to that's just going to try to control and manipulate me into doing what my parents want. And uh, I remember this one 
really brave kiddo came in and mom said, you know, we've been to like 18 therapists. This is our last go. What do you, what do you got? And I was like, all right, let's give it a try. So came into the office and I looked at the client and I said, you know, it's kind of weird to talk to somebody you don't know. Don't, don't you think, do you want to talk? And he's like, not really. And I'm like, cool. I've got a lot of notes to do. Why don't you hang out here? I'll take care of these notes. And then in an hour, we'll just go out and tell mom, like, we did it. Yay. <laughs> you know, And he was like, are you kidding me? And I said, no, I'm so serious. I have all of these notes. Do you see this pile? And I start typing and turn away from him. And within five minutes or so, he's like, uh, started talking and opening up. And I said, oh, I'm really busy with these notes. Did you want to chat? And uh, he said, yeah. So let me finish this. And I turned around and we went on to see one another for three or four years. I'll never forget. We went out to the lobby and I, I looked at him and I said, do you think you'd come back? And he was like, yeah, maybe once. And I was like, cool. See you next week. And mom was like, I don't know what happened, but I'll take it. (laughs) So there's that. I think it's interesting, you know, because really what it comes down to is creating transformation in people's lives. And really you just kind of, the pivot you made was to kind of work on a more of a mega scale so that you could help therapists so that they could reach more people. Um, Why don't we dive into some of the, the core content here? Could you maybe share some of the common myths that keep uh, therapists and healing entrepreneurs of any kind really from creating abundance in life? Yes. I think the most common one is that there isn't abundance in healing, right? I hear a lot of healers say, it's like, I don't do it for the money. And one of the most open emails that I ever sent out had the subject line, I do it for the money. And you know, I think there's a lot of shame and guilt in that, you know, do we do it for the money? You know, other professions are not shamed for that. But all of a sudden we are in the healing space and there's like shame or guilt. Like we we don't do it for the money. I mean, of course we do it for other reasons, but we also have bills to pay and this is our livelihood. So to be able to cultivate a relationship with doing it for the money is an important aspect. So when we believe that we don't do it for the money or there's not money in healing, there's usually not because we'll create those self-fulfilling prophecies. We will shut ourselves down. We will, I call it turning off our energetic open for business sign, right? So we're doing all of the typical marketing things where we've got our business cards, we're networking, we were got a social media presence. We might be blogging. Maybe we're listed on some of the websites to help get visibility, but yet it's not really working. And I think looking at beliefs like there's not money in healing, or I don't do it for the money, or I am a bad person, or I'm greedy, or yeah, just not good if I admit that the money is a part of this for me. I think those are, I mean, we could come up with a million more, but I think at the core, they're often related to those pieces if we keep digging and get to like the center. It's kind of interesting because, you know, because we, we, sometimes people that we work with will have the blocks and they, they tend to say the same things to themselves, you know, like, and you can hear, and you can hear the phrases. So I'm kind of curious, how do you, when you discover this block that somebody might have, do you have like, how do you work them through it so that they can not only just see the block? Cause I, I think even some might even know that they have the block, but they're not able to shift it. How do you help people shift that, shift those ideas? A lot of different ways. I really work energetically because I find that our energy is what fuels our action and our behavior. And if we're just dealing with it at the mind level, it's so limiting to what is possible from there because the mind will think what the mind is going to think. And we have to actually expand and open our energetic field in order to think upgraded thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so one, it's identifying what are the beliefs that are there. And then after we identify what they are, is it true that this is actually the case? Can Do you know anyone who is abundant as a healer? So part of it, I think that's why I do this work in group so often, because I find that we show each other what's possible. It's hard to keep believing that there's no money in healing when your friends and colleagues are making multiple six figures in the healing industry. It's like, oh, well, shoot, <laughs> that might not be true. So yeah, we unwind those beliefs. My work can be fast. I love Kylie that you spoke to like the magic and miracles that can absolutely happen quickly. But I also believe in going slow, going at the rate that each person's nervous system needs to move so that it doesn't 
collapse or combust with these big changes? Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many different methods that I use. You know, sometimes we are doing tapping. Sometimes I'm doing energetic clearing. Sometimes we're unwinding ancestral patterns. I think a lot of times too, these wounds don't start with us. We come from generations upon generations of ideas, beliefs, and realities in our history that are stored in our our cellular structure, our cellular memory. And we don't even know why we're doing what we're doing, why we're believing what we're believing. And so I also take a look at those pieces and help those to unwind and dissolve as well. And I find when we do that, there's not a lot for us to do with these patterns. It's like they start letting go of us as we begin to see them and let go of them. I absolutely love that. And, you know, one of the things that I was thinking about as you were talking was how I've done a lot of storytelling work with, with psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, and things of that nature. And they always tell me, you know, I can't share my story. I can't be personal. I can't talk about myself. And I get it. That's how they're trained. And in some cases, there's actually regulations around it. So like they really cannot. In some cases too, though, I believe that there is a sense of I can't because I can't break the rules or I can't because I am too vulnerable. Like there are some areas where there's some wiggle room and they don't want to go there. And I've always found a way to work with them. And to say, like, if you can't share a story about yourself, can you then share a story about your body of work? Like, why do you do what you do? How do you hope to impact people? How would the world change if you reach more people and they reach more people? And I actually think I taught that style of storytelling at your event and people really, really resonated with it. So what I've noticed as I've, because this has been like a five, six, seven year process for me of helping these these people, I'm curious what your thoughts are. And I think that this bleeds over into all the people that we're working with. Do you think that people feel afraid to go into their full potential, whether it's telling their story, making money, attracting abundance, because there's been professional limitations imposed on them and they just get stuck in it like a straitjacket? Or do you think that people in the healing fields are attracted to those fields because they have a little bit of wounding that attracts that sense of like, you can't be yourself. You can't share yourself. You can't do what you're, you know, you can't do you. So like go over here where you're not allowed to. (laughs) I one love that you could even identify those two options. And I think it's a bit (laughs) of both. There's absolutely a collective consciousness of of scarcity of limitation and i think it was birthed out of a, a it was well intentioned right to have appropriate boundaries ethics integrity but i think we've taken it to the nth degree and in a lot of ways humanity has been taken out of the therapeutic arts where it's a one-sided relationship and i do believe at the core we are attracted to the field because part of us wants to hide Right. I know I certainly was, you know, I didn't realize this at first, but it became a very cozy little safe place where it was all about them. And I didn't have to feel my pain. I didn't have to talk about my story. And I had an excuse. I had a field that backed me on that. However, as I tried to grow my practice, my therapy practice grew pretty well with not a lot of work around that. But as, you know, God called me to greater and bigger things, I had to really get serious to about looking inward and admitting that there was ways that I didn't want to be seen. I was afraid of talking about my insecurities, vulnerabilities, sensitivities, my failures. And as I started freeing that energy, I found that my, yeah, something liberated and I became more available to what was mine, whether that be clients, a new level of abundance and receiving. It's like, you can't close off from one thing and then be open to another. I think our energy field is either like closed off or it's available. And I teach people how to create a protective perimeter, kind of like a screen, right? So the mosquitoes and bugs aren't getting in, but the breeze and the good stuff is absolutely able to to come our way and find us. Yeah, that's a, it's really interesting too, because we, we've, we've had the honor of working with some of the top psychotherapists in in the world really you know Terry Real Esther Perel 
Nick Schwartz, uh, just a, just a few. But I think what's interesting is when you look at all of them, including some of the maybe more mainstream, there's like Brene Brown and, you know, some of the, some of the people that you can, that you, that people look to, all of them share their stories, you know, all of them are on stage sharing what they went through and how they made the transformation. It's all part of their journey, you know, to kind of come back to what Kylie was saying. And I know that it's almost like you have to reach a point where you're so secure in yourself that you're not going to feel if you share something vulnerable that your clients are going to think, oh, this person that I'm going to that has all the answers, you know, is kind of like, you know, hasn't figured it out yet or they're all kind of messed up, you know. <laughs> totally. And, and I think along those lines, Richard, we have to we have to do it in service to the other, right? We don't tell our story for ourselves. Like, yes, of course, we're benefiting and but it's it's in service to the work. Right. And I that's what I ask, like, what? What does the world miss out on without your story being heard, right? Who could relate to that? Who does that touch? What does that mean? And I think at the beginning of being trained to be a therapist, a coach, a healer, there is something to let's be mindful of us versus them because some people just spill their story out all over the place. And it's really not in service. It's very uh, centering of self. But I think there's a maturation process that happens as we move through our journey as a healer, where it becomes impossible to not include ourselves in it, because it's what makes us relatable. It helps them to feel seen and heard and like really understood, which is what helps them invest in their own healing with us or in general, just plants that seed. I think that's so powerful. And you nailed it when you said the story is not about us. People come to me and they're like, what story should I share? What story do I do? And I'm like, you know what you want to do? The story that's in service to your audience, like take yourself out of it. It's about you, but it's also not. And so I've shared a lot of stories in my career, but there's a lot of stories. I'll share it with you, but I'm not about to share it with my audience. You know what I mean? Because it's not helpful because I need to process it still or because it's not in alignment with where they're looking to grow. So yeah, it's not like you said, I love what you said. It's not like a spew fest. And I, I really try to teach that as much as possible. I feel like this is a good segue to something that you've talked about that we've talked about that I think is a popular topic right now, which is kind of like that nervous system calibration, because I think with storytelling, there's so much of that. And you have to expand to be able to share yourself. And then sometimes when people do the spew thing, you like your nervous system contracts. So I'm curious about just like wealth building and abundance. And that's kind of your, I'm talking about what I like. And let's talk about what you like again. Okay. But, but uh, I think that with the abundance stuff, you've talked about that nervous system calibration. Will you talk more about that? Absolutely. I think we want to speed through. We want harder, faster, stronger. Like that's a lot of the collective consciousness. If we think about it from like an integral level, which your audience might be somewhat familiar with, we we're really moving from like that strive drive to that heart centered opening to eventually where we can merge the two, where we know when to push and we know when to pause. And there is, I think of birthing our business a lot like birthing a baby, right? It's like, if you're pushing before it's time, that's not actually effective or helpful to the process. And if you're pausing when you need to be pushing, that's not supportive to bring this creation into the world either. So our nervous system, when it's collapsed or shut down, when we're so terrified and we're in a freeze or a fight or flight response, we're not actually available to receive what is for us. So first we need to know what we have, a, we need to have a relationship with our body and our nervous system. So I really recommend body work and somatic work and you know, network chiropractic has been huge for me, but what are the resources that involve your body in your business so that you know when you're open and when you're closed, when you can go a little faster and when you need to slow down? One of the places I talk about this in most commonly is in where we price ourselves, right? There's a lot of talk about high ticket coaching and high ticket pricing and charge your worth. And I say, charge what your nervous system is capable of handling and know that it can grow from that place. Because if you're not ready to receive a $10,000 client package, then one, you're, you're going to push those clients away. You're going to get a lot of resistance. One of the ways you can know if your relationship with your body or your nervous system is shut down is if 
you get a lot of pushback on your pricing or nobody responds. You know, there are people that charge five, 10, 20, 50, $100,000 and they're getting paid for those packages. So it's not that it's impossible to have high rates, but it could be currently unavailable in your nervous system. And it's totally fine to charge what you're ready to charge. I, I invite people to say their fee and to breathe and like, can they say that with an open heart and open body without like freaking out or, you know, and could you stretch that a little bit? Like, could you go $5 over it? Could you go $10 over it and begin to let yourself adjust? And then the next client, you know, you could charge a little bit more or the next launch or program, you can do that. And I think this is an unpopular conversation. People don't want to hear this. They want to hear, I followed this formula. I've got this you know, high ticket offer and I'm just going to do it. But there's some behind the scenes and under the hood stuff that has to be aligned in order for that to actually have the proper fuel to work. Yeah, I really love that. And I, I think a lot of times there's just a separation between somebody, how somebody feels and whether they can access that and their business. And there's very rarely the linking of the two. I mean, my, my sense is that those people who really take care of their bodies and whatever way they choose to do that yoga or meditation or running, or it doesn't matter really what it is that, but those people that are connected to their body are actually able to, to grow their business faster. Cause they have that connection form, you know, they have that felt sense of what, what, what things, uh, what, what, whether it's right or not for the client and for themselves. Absolutely. And one of my sayings is, you know, you can't charge what you're worth because you're priceless. Your fee is just an exchange of energy for the moment and what's aligned. I'm also rather, we've already talked about my rebellious nature. I do a lot of intuitive pricing where I don't think that everyone needs to pay me the same thing. I think that different numbers and different levels of investment unlock different levels of healing for different people. And for some people, paying this amount is exactly what needs to happen for them to get this transformation. For other people, they need to pay a different amount to get that transformation. So I'm always in a deep practice of listening, one, when I'm inviting clients in to work with me, but two, when I'm working with my clients, there's never a cookie cutter like do this or do that. There's a feeling of what is in right alignment for this season, for your nervous system, and for the people that you're meant to serve. At a spiritual level, like I don't think it's it's just random who we're helping. Like I think there's something much higher unfolding, perhaps even to the level that we have agreements with certain human beings to help them unlock different levels of healing, wellness, expansion. That doesn't have to be your idea, but I think it does make things easier when I remember that like the whole cosmos has my back and this isn't random, like something magical is unfolding. And I'm just like tuning into that channel so that I can help the unfolding. Yeah. Come to life. Well, you're definitely speaking our language. I, I, I love it. It's like such a, such an easy conversation to have. And, you know, I'll just, I just make a comment on the pricing too. Like if, if you had all the money in the world and you price it for free, I think it's a real disservice to the person receiving. Cause often, and you could, I can see this in myself. I'll, I'll own this. If I get something for free, I just don't value it as much. I'm not going to put the work in. And so for a lot of clients, the, if they pay a little bit of higher price, they'll be more committed and they'll show up on time and they'll actually do the work that's required to kind of get the results. So that's one of the that's one of the kind of like energetic shifts that, that sometimes we we mention. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely seen that um, as well. It's yeah, it's fascinating the behind the scenes <laughs> these kind of things. Yeah, don't don't we all know that? Oh my gosh, that's that's so interesting. I'm curious what your bigger vision for all of this is because you're doing really powerful work. And I don't get the sense that you're just like, eh, I'm just doing it. You know, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you might know me a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, I, I do this work because I believe that we need money in the hands of conscious, kind humans who will then have the capacity to impact the evolution of humanity. And I find that if 
we who are awakening are disconnected from wealth and abundance and the resource that we're currently using on this planet to be able to make decisions and buying power and making an impact, then I think it really stunts the the expansion and growth of humanity. So that's why I show up every day and feel really excited about this because, you know, we can work against the system or we can, we can be involved in it. We can alchemize it. We can transmute it. We can change it. And it's those of us that are aware that these things are even unfolding that are going to be the leaders in doing that. So, yeah, I'm really excited to witness more awakened healers and humans having wealth to be able to impact those kinds of changes. Yeah, that's amazing. Let me ask like kind of one, one final question here. And it's, it's probably because we run a marketing firm, but I know that a lot of therapists, healers, you know, alternative practitioners, they, they kind of want to not touch the marketing, not touch sales. Cause it's kind of like the dirty thing. And, and they, they almost feel like it puts them beneath beneath them, you know, and I'm kind of curious how you work with others to help them to go online in authentic ways and maybe take down the wall between, Hey, this is marketing. And this is how I help people to maybe, maybe the, the marketing is actually how I can help people by getting in front of people's messages. I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts on that are. I have this conversation a lot. You're, <laughs> you're absolutely tuned into that. I, I sometimes don't use the word marketing. I use the word inviting. And I find that that resonates with something that most therapists, healers, coaches can get behind. It's like, where are your people and what what do they need to hear to feel invited into your world and what you're creating for them? The other thing I teach is the energetics of marketing, which also gives some more flexibility to where we don't have to do as much external marketing. If we are aligned, things come to us. There is an attractive quality, a magnetism that I like to help people activate so that they have the option, right? I don't believe that anyone has to be on social media, has to be blogging, has to be running ads, has to be doing... like. There's no one thing that works for all of us. Sometimes I meditate and feel, okay, who would you have me serve next? And my phone rings. I didn't do anything other than get in clarity and relationship with that. Does everyone have that capacity? I think yes, to some degree, but everyone has a different way and path to grow their business. So I'm always interested in what are you not doing because you're afraid or you haven't cultivated the inner capacity to be able to do this thing that you need to do versus what is just not yours to do. And we can toss that and stop working so hard to try to make that happen for you. And when we can find that sweet spot between what you're like supposed to do and then supporting you and being uh, feeling safe enough in your body to actually move forward on that. I think that's when the, the magic starts to move and things start to happen. Yeah, I I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to make sure that everyone listening knows how to reach you and work with you. Now, your website is carrynola.com. Is that right? That's correct. And then your signature membership site is called the Abundance Activator. And that's you can also get there from the abundanceactivator.com. And you want to tell us a little bit about what's inside there? Absolutely. The Abundance Activator is a dream and vision of mine that I'm just so just over the moon that it's finally come to life. It's the place where I support healers in developing their relationship with giving and receiving in a harmonious way. So it's not learning a strategy or a technique. It's being in the energy of possibility, of miracles, of potential, and being with other people who are having the same conversation. And we have live live events. There's recorded material. It's not really about more content. You know, I think we have plenty of information, plenty of content. This is about the experience and the holding that is required for a sustainable practice of having what is ours and being able to connect to that. So this is my members community where, where we can do that together. And I'm excited about its growth. It's already a very potent place. Things are happening beyond my wildest imagination. So I stopped pretending a long time ago that I ever know what's going to happen when somebody works with me. That's between them and God. And I can show up and and do my part. (laughs) So good. 
Yeah, well, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks everybody for tuning in to this uh, episode. And if you want to get the show notes and the links and everything, you can go to consciousmarketer.com forward slash podcast. And you can learn about our accelerator there, learn about Carrie's programs. Thank you so much for joining us today, Carrie, and sharing your wisdom and insights with everybody on our podcast. You're so welcome. Blessed to be here. Thanks for having me.